This is High Park in Toronto. It's one of the city's best-loved parks. It contains some special ecosystems. High Park has an extensive area of black oak savanna. In this continentally rare ecosystem, open groves of black and white oak develop on sandy soils with tall grass prairie. Summer droughts discourage the dense forest which would otherwise be here. Oaks grow slowly and oak saplings usually get overwhelmed by maples and beeches. But on these dry, sandy soils, the maples and beeches suffer in summer drought and are scorched by the frequent spring grass fires. For most of the 20th century, the city of Toronto suppressed fires in Hyde Park, even though they still happened at the rate of perhaps seven a year. The lack of extensive burning damaged the ability of the savanna ecosystem to establish new oak saplings. In the 1990s, the city decided to help the oaks by conducting deliberate grass fires or prescribed burns. In April 2011, I showed up the day after the prescribed burn and all I got was footage of the singed vegetation. The action itself was over. But on 21st March 2012, I got the news that the annual burn was on. This time, I was there to film it happening. The weather was fine, unusually warm for March. Conditions were dry, and there was a light breeze blowing from the south-southwest. I found the Bloor burn site and filmed some pre-burn footage. Flags and markers were already in position. I found the media briefing underway in the parking lot of the Grenadier restaurant. The fire boss and his crew were going through flip charts and explaining their procedures. To film the Bloor burn, I positioned myself on a hill, giving me a good view of the whole site. I won't be able to see the details of the fire being started from this position, but the flames will gradually work towards me. The first job at the Bloor burn is to check that the burn site has been evacuated. A TV traffic helicopter is already overhead to film the excitement. Here we see the media arriving. The second task is to establish a back burn along Bloor, a burned zone which will subsequently stop fires from burning any further if they get out of control. The burn crew have assigned fire starting to just one person and he uses his ATV to kindle the back burn along Bloor. Smoke from the fire may disrupt traffic on Bloor, but the police are covering that. Then gradually, the burn crew lay lines of fire southwards. Line by line, the burn works its way over the site, with the flames going north into the burned area and then quickly going out. Some members of the crew are assigned to suppress spot fires where the combustion is getting a little too aggressive 
or too close to the oak saplings. Exciting gouts of flame erupt in front of the media. Finally, the burn reaches its southern limit, and the media descend on my filming position. My soundtrack starts to pick up their conversations. You can see here that a fire moves up a slope much faster than it does on the flat. The media take a keen interest in spot ignition as one of the burn crew grabs his hand torch. The fire boss and some of his crew begin the move to the other burn site, leaving fire suppression in progress. The fires of the Bloor burn gradually subside, smoke begins to clear, and a raptor returns. The West Road burn site is on a slope to the west of the road. Fires on slopes burn up to 17 times faster than those on the flat, so this one needs to be carefully managed. Evacuation is the first job. A couple of sunbathers have to get dressed in a hurry. To protect the road, the crew begins a back burn along the edge of the road. The sunbathers get out just in time.
Smoke is quite heavy on West Road, and we have to dodge the traffic. With the back burn complete, it's time to start the main burn from the south, and the fire-starting ATV moves off, leaving flames behind. I move down to the southwestern corner where a city worker is trying to keep pushy freelance photographers out of the flames. Hey miss, is it cool if you stick in the vegetation along this side? No, because on this side you can't. Like you can't get off the trail because the vegetation is too dense. Okay. She also has to deal with a weird guy with a cigarette lighter. Another city worker turns up with marshmallows. Very quickly, the burn begins to subside here, too. On my way out of the park, I stop by the Bloor Burn site, where the fire is essentially out. We can expect this area to green up quite soon. For the moment, no birds sing, and all you can hear is the sound of distant traffic. The 2012 prescribed burn is over. Thank you.